G'day, welcome to Down in the Woodworks. Today I just got a quick video showing you how I made my new crosscut sled. First I just want to explain that there's a little bit of footage missing from the beginning of the build because originally I wasn't going to make a video of this. I thought to myself there are so many crosscut sled videos out there that Who's going to want to watch another one? I, to be honest, I didn't do anything special or different to most crosscut sleds. But then I thought to myself, well, where do I draw the line deciding what my viewers might want to watch and what they might not want to watch? So I thought, stuff it, I'll video it and I'll post it and just let the numbers speak for themselves. If people want to watch it, they will. And if not, there's not too much lost. This build came about because I got myself another treadmill with a bigger motor for an upgrade to the belt sander. I'll do a short video about that also. The walking deck of the treadmill was made of heavy duty 20mm MDF with a smooth protective coating which I thought would be perfect for a decent crosscut sled. Starting with the rear fence, I milled and edge glued some reclaimed hardwood boards together to give me a height of 130mm. So this is the point where I started filming the build. Using a roll of duct tape, I traced out this profile to form a nice smooth transition to trim down the ends of the fence to a lower height than the centre or the area where the blade kerf would be. I ripped the straight cuts on the table saw and then cut most of the curves with the bandsaw. I then used the upgraded belt grinder to finish off the shaping. I wanted to attach the rear fence with glue, so that meant taking off some of the coating on the MDF because the glue wouldn't stick to it. I used a straight bit in the router with the depth set to about one millimeter. A quick sanding and it was ready to fit. With the fence clamped in place, I drilled pilot holes into the bottom edge of the fence through holes I'd already drilled into the sled itself. I then drilled out the holes in the sled for screw clearance and countersunk them so the screw heads wouldn't touch the top of the table saw. I might pause here for a moment to point out that I fitted those two runners there to the underside of the sled before I started filming the build. I just cut the runners to size, placed them in the table saw slots with double sided tape on the top and then placed the sled over them. I then tipped the sled over and added countersunk screws. Okay, back to the build. For the front fence, I had this board which was an old hardwood draw front. It was very straight and flat, so it was perfect. This board was 200 millimeters high, so I cut off 50 millimeters and I was gonna laminate that smaller piece to the larger piece to give me a wider bottom edge to fix to the sled. A few light passes through the thicknesser made easy work of removing the old paint. I wanted the same profile on the two fences so I traced the rear one onto the front fence and cut it out the same way. So there's no need to show that again. But I reckon we should have another look at me using the belt grinder. I'll have a link to that build video at the end of this video and in the description below. Here I'm laminating that narrower strip to the higher fence board to give me that wider bottom edge. Now always check which nails you have in your nail gun because this can happen. At least I got a good failed glue up post for my Instagram out of it. I thought about leaving them and just grinding down the nails, but because it was the inside face of the fence, I decided to pull it apart and do it again. With that repair done, I knocked off all the sharp corners with the trim router and finished it off with my favorite beeswax polish. It's okay, I have plenty more.
Before fixing the front fence in place, I ran the kerf cut through the sled, finishing just short of the front edge. Reason being, I didn't want to separate the base completely without the front fence fixed in place. I screwed the fence to the sled with one screw only at the right hand end, so I could use that as a pivot point to square up the fence to the kerf cut using my carpenter square before putting in the rest of the screws. I confirmed the square was actually square by placing it against a known straight edge and drawing a line. I then flipped the square over and checked it against the line I just drew. The results were spot on. These photos show the line near the corner of the square and here at the end of the square. Now that I had the fence as close as I could get it to square, I put in a second screw at the other end. I then extended the kerf cut all the way through the sled and then used Colin Connett's three cut method to fine tune the fence to 90 degrees. The fence only needed the tiniest adjustment and it was perfect. I'll leave a link to Colin's video below rather than me explaining the process here. Once I was happy with the alignment of the fence, I installed another three screws, bringing the total to five. And that's one very solid cross-cut sled done. Well, I've got to say, I'm really happy with the new sled. I've wanted to build myself a new one for quite a while now. You may or may not have noticed in my videos that I don't use a cross-cut sled very often. And the only reason being, I do have one, it's just not very good, so I choose not to use it. With this new one, hopefully you'll see it a lot more. Thanks for watching along. I hope you enjoyed the video. I do appreciate the time and support you guys give in watching my videos, so for that, thank you very much. If you wanna know what I'm up to in between videos, you can follow me on Instagram. But until the next one, you guys all have a great day.